Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm a galactic and an intuitive astrologer, and I want to talk to you today about the Aries full moon. And um, so the full moon itself is in Aries this month, and it is going to be at 24 degrees, 35 minutes of Aries. So this is not an eclipse. We had our solar eclipse in Libra at the last new moon, um, but it is still activating the nodal axis. So while it isn't officially an eclipse, there is still a very strong, potent energy of change and transformation. And, um, you know, again, you know, when we talk about eclipses, we sort of say, you know, they are like full or new moons on steroids. There can be very swift, sudden and unexpected changes and events that take place. And, you know, it does feel like there is potential with this full moon for that same sort of energy. And um, it is also a super moon. So the moon is going to be very close to our planet it's going to look much bigger and brighter in the sky if we're lucky enough to have clear skies when it is at its full and peak lunation so again you know super moons are much stronger than normal moons and you know they really do influence us and certainly when we're working with the full moon you know emotions are running high now, I'll talk briefly about the energy of Aries. Um, Aries is the first sign in the zodiac. So this is very much the point at which we are coming into the world. We're starting afresh. It's a br brand new blank slate. There is no sort of outside influence with Aries. And sometimes Aries, you know, can be accused of being very selfish and self-centered. But that is literally because there is no, there's nothing else to build on. When you're in Aries, you are very pure, you are authentic, you don't have that external influence or manipulation or interference, you are just you. It is very much the I am presence. Um, so, you know, with this full moon shining in Aries, there is a real spotlight on who are you when you strip away everything else when you strip away you know those belief systems that you've sort of had either projected onto you or you've taken on board and sort of thought well yeah maybe that is what I believe but actually it isn't actually your truth who are you when you get rid of all the programming or the conditioning or the teachings that perhaps you didn't quite align with but you were expected to take on board expect to follow you know, this is very much kind of stripping back to the basics of who you are at your core self. There is a real focus on finding out who we are when we sort of let go of all that extra sort of noise. And um, yeah, it, it is very much programming and conditioning and, and the stories that we sort of cling on to or we absorb or we are um sort of that we grow up with that perhaps aren't actually um you know completely authentic and true so really interesting energy to be working with um obviously you know with um Aries Mars is the ruling planet so that can bring about sort of strong um sort of emotions of anger potentially Mars sorry Aries in its lower expression is often um can be quite aggressive it can create conflict even war obviously Mars is the god of war and um, so there is a strong potential for even more anger more aggression at this time so that is something to be aware of but you know if we are feeling angry about something it is being being able to channel that anger in a very sort of productive and um, responsible way. It's not wrong to feel angry about something, but it's then how you react to that anger and how you channel that emotion that is really important. And um, it's very much the sign of initiation, of getting something off the ground, of being the pioneer, of stepping out into new territory, new unexplored territory, new lands, new energies. And so something new is absolutely being born at this time. It is very much the sign of leadership. So again, you know, there may be a sense that many of us are just really pushed to step out and, you know, stop waiting for someone to take control.
to take the lead. It is up to us at this time to, you know, really just have the courage to put ourselves out there, to step forward, to try something new and, you know, trust that people will follow you if that is what you're called to do. So again, you know, don't be caught up in fear and sort of the fear of what other people are going to think and the fear of judgment from external sources. This is very much about you trusting your gut and tr knowing deep inside you what is right and what needs to be done, where you need to go, the moves you need to make, the projects you need to start. You know, this is very much um, about trusting the self above all else. And that is really, really important at this time. So of course, you know, Aries is the fire sign, it's cardinal fire. So we may find, you know, there is a spark being lit here, an ignition point. Again, you know, it is all about it just takes one spark to develop into a flame to start to burn bright. So I really like that idea as well with the fire. You know, there is a lot of transmuting here and purification as well, taking us really back to the basics, to the pure core sense of who we are. And, you know, <laughs> It's also interesting that because we're working with the energy of a full moon, you know, there is the sense that we are at the end of the lunar cycle. So there is a sense of endings, of completion, of release and letting go. And that is part of the process. So, you know, we're reminded even more so than usual, perhaps, that because we're working with the new and the old together, you know, there is creation, but destruction, destruction needs to happen in order to create. We need to let go and allow things to end and to dissolve fall away and crumble if necessary in order for you know the space in order to create the space for the new to come through so again you know it is very much about ending through the full moon into a beautiful new beginning through Aries now um like I said, I just wanted to pull out some of the key sort of energies and themes and features of this full moon. And one of the biggest um, features is the Cardinal Grand Cross. Now, I will show you my screen. OK, so as you can see, this is the full moon chart and um, I have got it set for New Jersey. So ignore the um the sort of the houses and we whereabouts everything is lying let's just look at the numbers and the symbols and also the aspects but we have with the full moon moon in aries opposing the sun if we come round to the bottom here we can see pluto is in capricorn at 29 degrees and if we go to the top we have mars at 22 degrees of cancer so although this um opposition mars and pluto is not exact there's still you know a fairly wide orb the energy is still very much relevant and active so it is creating a fixed sorry a cardinal grand cross between all four of the cardinal signs being activated and of course this is even stronger because the moon's ruler so mars is part of this cross up here in cancer and whenever we have a cross, which is made up of two oppositions and then four squares, you know, this is not what you would call um, a flowing, relaxed, supportive aspect or pattern to have in the chart. You know, this is very tense. It is intense. There is a lot of tension. There is a lot of pressure. There is a lot of sort of push, pull energy, jarring energy. You know, these signs, although they are all cardinal, so they all want something to happen. They all want action to be taken. They all want to kind of get something off the ground. They are finding it quite hard to kind of relate to one another because they are so different. So there is a real sense of having to negotiate ways around, you know, this sort of tension and this pressure, finding a way through but the pressure is so intense that it cannot be ignored. Something has to happen. Action has to be taken. We have to find our way through this. And um, so, you know, because we've got Mars and, and Pluto in opposition, you know, these are two really sort of heavyweight, 
players in astrology. Pluto wants to transform. We've talked about Pluto, you know, extensively all year, but Pluto wants change, wants transformation, is not scared of destroying something in order so that something new can be created, is not scared of going into the underworld, looking in the shadows, looking at what has been hidden to expose it. And Mars, you know, up there in opposition is very much about sort of, um, very catalytic, very um, ambitious, full of drive, full of passion, full of motivation. And, you know, it's interesting that Mars is in Cancer, which is really sort of forcing us to perhaps look at where we have come from, our roots, our foundations, our lineage, our ancestry. And again, that feels like it plays a really big part in this full moon energy, in this full moon chart. And so, you know, there, there is a real sense of tension, you know, something has got to give, you know, we can't sit back and just allow things to carry on as they have been. And the moon, you know, representing the people in many parts of astrology, as well as our inner world and our inner emotions and our inner landscape is very much, you know, standing up for what is right and what is just with the sun in opposition, sort of supporting and shining a light. And obviously Libra, very much the sign linked to justice and to equality and to the law and legal matters. So really interesting themes coming through. Now, the moon is next to Eris, 24 degrees of Aries. This is really, really interesting. Eris is the goddess of discord and strife. She is not afraid to cause a few of her own eruptions and issues, not afraid to challenge, not afraid to call out where something is not right, where there is injustice, where there is an underdog, where there is manipulation. And, you know, she is fearless. So very strong warrior energy, sister of Mars, very linked to the underworld, not afraid to go into the shadows to look at the dark, to look at, you know, the injustice and where, you know, where many of us dare not tread because it is just so horrific potentially. So really interesting that Eris is lending her energy to this full moon chart in such a profound and such a potent and empowered way. Also in square to Pluto, in square to Mars, obviously opposite the sun. So she is also part of this cardinal grand cross. She wants to have a voice. She wants to call out what she sees as, you know, um, unjust and unfair. And, you know, like I said, she is a very strong um, archetype at the time of this full moon. We also have Chiron in Aries, again, fairly close, so playing a really big part of this chart, Chiron being the wounded healer, and Chiron really lending this beautiful energy, supportive healing energy for us to really see where we have been wounded, where have we been disconnected from ourselves, where have we not seen the truth of who we are, where have we not been able to connect with the truth of ourselves, you know, where have we potentially had other ideas, opinions, conditioning, stories, patterns sort of projected onto us that perhaps, you know, are really distracting us and leading us away from being able to be see who we are and of course you know there is this really strong sense of you know as we ascend as our consciousness rise rises we are able to see more of who we are we're able to connect with our inner light with our inner power with our inner warrior and really see, really um, understand how strong and powerful we are when we strip away anything that has been holding us back or keeping us sort of playing small for fear of standing in our own light. So this is really, again, really powerful energy to have at this full moon. And with the sun shining, you know, this beautiful and um, supportive light on Chiron, on Eris, on the moon, you know, again, it is really lighting up this whole part of the chart for us. 
Now, the other um, thing I just wanted to mention is the fact that Venus is at 29 degrees of Scorpio. So Venus is in a very tight sextile with Pluto. She is also in a opposition to Uranus. And, you know, th th this is a big deal. So Venus represents love. She is the goddess of love and beauty. And um, in Scorpio, you know, she is um, feeling a lot more sensitive. She is not afraid to step into the shadows, to go under the surface, to go into the underworld, potentially, especially with this sort of support from Pluto, who is also more than happy to do that. And Uranus in opposition is really sort of breaking things up, breaking things through, destabilizing um, our sort of secure system and um, platform, you know, through that fixed earth, through Taurus, shaking things up so that when Venus does look under the covers, does look under the surface, she can see a lot more. You know, there are the, the landscape is broken up, the energies are being scattered so she can see through to the truth. You know, Scorpio is very linked to transformation, but Scorpio also wants to connect to the truth of what is and the truth of the matter in Taurus and um, matter being earth mother. So, you know, this is really, really interesting um, aspects to have in the chart. And Venus also represents what we value. She represents our resources. She represents our gifts and our talent. So it is highly likely that through what is uncovered, what is exposed, what is seen and understood um, is Yes, it's going to be very emotional um, because, you know, we are at a full moon. We've got Venus in the anoretic degree of one of the most emotional and sensitive signs, water signs in the chart, Scorpio. But there is also the sense that through that new gifts can come to the surface, can come online, can be claimed or reclaimed in many ways. You know, this is about sort of connecting with lost parts of ourselves. It's also about through the opposition to Uranus, which is the higher mind, our higher consciousness, very much linked to awakening, awakening to higher gifts, to a sort of more um, higher way of seeing ourselves, of understanding our energy, and also awakening more to what actually matters, you know, and interesting that the axis of Scorpio and Taurus is very much linked to resources, to finances, but also to exchange, to power. And, um, you know, when we are working with Scorpio, you know, this can be disempowerment, control, themes of abuse, themes of, you know, finances and exchange for nefarious purposes. Again, this is in its lower um, expression. But again, you know, all this is really starting to come to light at this time. And this full moon is going to trigger that and escalate it even more. And um, so, just finally, um, or two final things, Jupiter at 21 degrees now retrograde is in an exact um, or near exact sextile to Chiron. So Jupiter is expansion and growth through understanding, through information, through connecting all the different strands and pulling things together to form a truth and a sense of a deeper understanding. And through doing that, you know, the healing is coming through. There is information coming through to help us understand who we are, what we are, and that is very much going to help us heal our deepest wounds and step into that higher healing energy through Chiron. And also interesting over here, this glyph is representative of the asteroid Atlantis. So you can see that Atlantis is very close now to the south node and will they will meet in exactitude um, not long after the full moon. So um, this is really interesting because to me, you know, to have asteroid Atlantis again, quite prominent in a full moon chart, um, you know, this is really helping us to connect to and to remember the wounds and the karma that we, so many of us have that links back to our times in Atlantis. And with sort of the Atlantis story, you know, the story of an ancient earthly civilization 
that you know ended up abusing power and control to the point where that created its own down downfall you know so many of us have come through almost to reenact this in in certain ways in many ways but also to really face up to it and to heal those wounds and to clear that trauma and that ancestral karma which you know is such a big part of earth's history and um, so you know it is a case it may feel like you know the cycle is repeating the stories are repeating and we can see that you know atlantean karma is playing out in so many ways across the planet at this time but it also feels that very much the case that this is the lifetime this is the point in our history and our evolution where we don't make the same mistakes again it may look and feel as if we are but we have this opportunity to right the wrongs to tip the scales to rebalance to bring justice and of course the libra and energy is very much about that so the fact that atlantis is in libra at this time is really really interesting and really appropriate and telling and deeply supportive that with the south node here this is about releasing what we need to let go of and move on from so that we can move into more sovereign space so we can claim who we are through that aries north node and of course with the moon here in aries you know again it is just beautifully supportive to help us do that so you know we may find that there are memories coming up through um, sort of past life connections to Atlantis at this time, I'm certainly being drawn to really explore, you know, themes and stories and learn more about that particular civilization and what it stood for and what happened and the lessons that we need to learn. So I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure that applies for many of us. But, you know, if you are sort of being drawn to look at that, you know, don't um, don't disregard it. I think it's important that at a collective level, we really get to grips with and understand the lessons that we need to learn because that is part of us being able to let go of our past the trauma to release and clear and heal in order to step into higher versions of ourselves which ultimately will help us ascend so really really pertinent and apt at this time so um i'm going to just take the yeah, there we go. Um, so just want to talk briefly, or perhaps we'll see how brief it is, about the galactic alignments, um, because there's some really interesting sort of things in the chart, you know, that are worth um, bearing in mind as in terms of galactic and fixed star and cosmic support. So um, the moon at 24 degrees of Aries is conjunct a fixed star called Akamar, which is A C M sorry, A-C-A-M-A-R, and Akamar is at 23 degrees of Aries. So this is a tight conjunction. Akamar is activating Eris, the moon, and Chiron, and obviously is in opposition to the sun. Now, this is a star that's not particularly well known. It wasn't one that I had come across before, but I was called to just look and see what stars sort of lie in the third deacon of Aries, and there it was. So Akamar is part of the Eridanus constellation and star system. Eridanus, the river, and, you know, we may be more familiar with Arcanar, which is one that I talk about quite regularly. Arcanar has been um, conjunct Saturn or activating Saturn for quite a lot of this year and will continue to be as Saturn starts to move direct um, after it's finished its retrograde period. Um, but, you know, this is the river constellation. Now, it is believed that Akamar was originally thought to be the end of the river. But then at some point in history, Arcanar was added to the constellation and Arcanar then became the end of the river. So there is a strong theme here with this river theme and symbology of the fact that we are on a spiritual journey and obviously with you know the flow of the water we'll always find a way you cannot stop and block water off if you do you will create a flood eventually and you know it's going to um create more problems than perhaps you know it's it's worth so water cannot be stopped it will always find a way it will find a way through it will go under if it needs to and um, water being very cleansing energy and um, very much sort of encouraging us and reminding us to stay in the flow to trust the journey to trust the path even if it goes in a different direction than we were perhaps expecting if there are detours 
just trust that that is needed, that that is the path and that you are still always heading in the right direction. And of course, when we get to the end of the river, to the mouth of the river, the mouth, the river joins the vast ocean, the great sea, the void. And this sort of stream of consciousness, this stream of energy becomes one with all that is and steps into the greater whole and to unity, which is ultimately where we are going. So it's kind of a reminder that you know we need to keep going we can't stop we can't try and block our way in our way cannot be blocked um you know even if it feels like it is there is always going to be something that helps us to push through and um, also that you know ultimately the destination is to step back into unity consciousness to step back into source energy to reconnect and to you know kind of let go of where we have become disconnected, where we have become separated. And, you know, and this full moon, you know, this part of the journey, it does feel as if we may have to go um, on this part of the journey, perhaps on our own, to stand on our own two feet, because it is about Aries energy. But ultimately, it is a reminder that, you know, where we are going, we won't be alone. And we're not ever alone. It's sort of a real sort of beautiful, spiritual, supportive um, reassurance reminder that we are not on our own, even if it feels like we are. And actually, we're all in this river, you know, whether we're in a boat or a canoe or we're swimming, however, we're all on the same journey and following the same path ultimately. So it's really sort of beautiful symbolism and theme and imagery coming through. Um, also interesting that the Eridanus constellation has really strong links to nature and to the elementals. So we've got some really beautiful magical energy coming through. And, you know, the Eridanians are said um, to be really invested in supporting us to break free of false timelines and false ideas and false hoods to help us and support us to stand in our spiritual sovereignty, to understand who we are, to break through anything that is holding us back. Um, you know, very much invested in supporting our spiritual awakening. So again, really, really, really um, exciting and promising and full of hope to have that star supporting the moon at this time. Now, in the other side of the chart, Libra, we have Arcturus and Spica in conjunction to the sun. And again, both really beautiful stars to be working with at this time. Now, these stars have activated the south node um, previously, but now it is the sun's turn to shine a light on these two energies. Now, both um, stars are, share the same degree. They both share 24 degrees of Libra, but they are quite different and they're certainly not close to each other in the cosmos, but they do um, they do work well together. There's beautiful synergy. So if I talk about Spiker or speaker first. Now, speaker is in the Virgo constellation, even though um, we are talking about a Libra degree here, 24 degrees of Libra. And speaker is um, said to be the goddess of the harvest. You know, this is very much energy of the divine feminine, of the mother, of the goddess. Biker is linked to gifts. And so here, you know, we are absolutely being given the chance to bring in and activate new gifts that can help us and support us. Gifts that perhaps we have always had, but we haven't had the strength or the courage or the confidence to step into them and start using them. Um, you know, gifts that perhaps we weren't aware of or that we've had, you know, disconnected or concealed or hidden or shut off. So again, you know, this is a beautiful time for new gifts and old gifts to be coming back online. You know, this is like reaping um, what we have sowed. It's like a time of harvest for the humanity when the sun activates spiker, very much linked to fortune, to success, to prosperity. So again, you know, it may feel because this is an opposition that it is somehow out of reach, but actually, you know, it is about being able to reach out and take it because the energy is there. It's cheering us on. It's almost trying to project itself onto us so that we can wake up and see, you know, the truth of what we have and what we are and what we can bring to humanity at this time. Um, it is also linked to the divine womb as the cosmic mother. So there's a sense here 
of bringing Christianity into um, physical form, bringing the divine into the physical, you know, through the Virgo constellation. Um, it is also um, very much linked to truth and to communication. And when you have a strong spike alignment in your chart, you're often really gifted at communicating and sharing information and telling stories um, and also having clarity about what is really going on. And what is also really beautiful about this star is it really encourages us to focus on being, to come into a point of stillness, of serenity, of peace, of balance. Balance and to really start to identify it with who you are and who you be rather than what you do. So while the moon in Aries, you know, is very much about action and getting things going, speaker in opposition it is just sort of trying to hold space for us, reminding us that actually, you know, often the most sort of um, achievement comes from just standing in stillness and connecting to, you know, our inner force, our inner light, our inner power, because that is then when, you know, we can start to really make things happen. So it's almost like, you know, the catalyst of being with it in, which again is very much linked to the self and the energy that I talked about at the beginning. So, you know, this is really auspicious energy. It's full of blessings. It's full of rewards, very much about bounty beautiful nurturing energy um, and also divine perfection um, so amazing star to have at this full moon and then the other um, sort of the, the partner in crime if you like Arcturus so Arcturus is in the Boots constellation and this star you know the Arcturians are very well known in the star seed sort of community if you can call it that and um, this is a star that really promotes more of the divine masculine energies but again bringing the divine masculine and divine feminine into harmony so um you know boots and arcturus is again very much about balance about healing and um, arcturus is very linked to quantum healing and there's a strong understanding that emotional healing is the key because when we sort of balance out our emotions and heal our emotions then that has a really positive effect on our physical experience and our physical health and well-being and obviously we have the mind and the mental sort of um, aspects as well. So um, with Arcturus, there is always sort of deep wisdom, spiritual gifts and strong intuition, a calling to really recognize the value in collaboration and to working in partnership through that Libra energy. Um, it is also, you know, very heart opening energy, also inviting us to connect with something outside of ourselves perhaps to you know look at what is going outside of ourselves to, but to really understand that that is just a reflection of our inner world and our inner truth so again you know what can we do for us ourselves at an inner level to bring ourselves back into balance which will then reflect out and sort of reflect out into the world and bring the outer world back into peace and balance and harmony and um, you know Arcturus is really also encouraging us to remember who we are and the fact that we are so much more than we believe or that we've led to believe or that we've been taught to believe or understand who who and what we are and um, the Arcturus energy is serves as a gateway or a portal and all souls coming in and out of earth pass through the Arcturus gateway at the time of incarnation at the beginning and then when we end our journey when we pass when we move through and leave our bodies again we pass through the Arcturian stargate so this is, you know, really wise, really nurturing, almost like a spiritual mid midwife type energy. They are space holders. They are holding our hand. They want to see us grow. They want to see us do well. Um, they want to support us, absolutely. So we've got this beautiful sort of galactic um, energy here to help us as we move through these times. But there's also a sense that, you know, they are always there at times of transition when we need that extra support and extra guidance so that is really really beautiful very protective sort of like our overseers and from a much much higher frequency a much higher dimension now um we also have um mercury i just want to talk about mercury because mercury 
has or will have passed the Shapley attractor at the time of the full moon. So there'll be a three degree orb, more or less. But this is still very much active and influential. And the Shapley is one of the or the most powerful galactic point that we work with. Um, it's a cosmic point. It represents truth and integrity. And it serves as a huge sort of um, cosmic magnetic force almost pulling us back to the truth of who we are sort of literally yeah it's it's unavoidable we have to get back to source energy when we're working with the Shapley and all that is sort of ill aligned or misaligned not standing in truth not full of integrity and um, you know that is kind of distracting us from our our true our truth and our understanding of who we are is stripped away literally peeled back you know um with force when the Shapley is activated. So this is deeply healing because we are working with Scorpio energy, deeply transformative, but for our greatest good. And it cannot be avoided because this force is so powerful. And um, so with Mercury here, this is about an, an understanding of who we are and what is going on and what is truth at our core. So again, you know, interesting to see how that is going to play out. Um, over the course of the following months, you know, as we sort of move through this full moon and then over the, um, yeah, of the times that follow it. And we also have some really beautiful Archangelic um, energy supporting Mercury in the trine with Fomalhaut, which is one of the royal stars linked to Archangel Gabriel and Deneb Adige, which is the Cygnus um the Cygnus constellation. So this is swan energy, very sort of strength, strong, can be quite ferocious, but also very graceful, very elegant and very high frequency. So, you know, really beautiful to have those stars supporting Mercury, supporting our understanding and really influencing the messages that are coming through at this time. And then the last um, star I wanted to talk about is Alpha Centauri, because Venus at 29 degrees of Scorpio is conjunct Alpha Centauri and opposing stars in the Pleiades system, which are at sort of at the final degrees of Taurus and the very first degree of Gemini. So Alpha Centauri is um, a star that is sort of very strongly associated with crystals and with crystal energy and about using sort of um, the wisdom that is contained within crystals, perhaps that has been programmed in and left within crystals for us to connect with. And obviously, you know, with Venus here, this is about having these beautiful energies as a resource to help us with our gifts, to help us expand our talents and to really transform us you know for the highest good and um, the alpha centurions as a race of beings are also said to really be um supporting us to step into our spiritual master mastery and our spiritual sovereignty to let go of sort of false timelines, you know, programs, programming, conditioning, control, manipulation that may have created a dis um a detour or a distraction or a disconnection from the truth of what is going on and the truth of who we are so again you know this energy coming through at this time at this new moon especially as it's supported with pluto and opposed by uranus again you know it is deeply powerful and really helping us to really get to the core of what is going on um, so where, you know, we have stood and we have felt perhaps that there are people, you know, who are overpowering us or disempowering us, we may start to see that that was just an illusion. And actually, you know, we are strong within ourselves and within who we are. So that is really timely. And this star also really helps us to connect to the strength and the power of our own inner light and to, con and to really feel that and to know it and to recognize it. And as we do, we allow it to grow and obviously you know um I talked about in a recent video about that beautiful sculpture where you know it's a human form but it's full of cracks and there's light shining out from within again I just keep getting this image of as the cracks get wider you know and we start to really connect to our wounds and the, you know and um everything that we've been through more light comes through until the point where there is just so much light streaming through that you can't see the cracks anymore you can't see the wounds anymore it, we are just pure light 
So I hope, you know, you can sort of see that as well. It just feels like a really strong message of hope. So really, really beautiful. And the fact that Pleiadian stars are also in opposition at this time again, just so beautiful. You know, the Pleiadians are our galactic relatives, our galactic cousins. They watch over us. They want us to do well. You know, they want us to succeed. They're here to support if we're willing to sort of reach out and ask for their help. I feel that, you know, a lot of them are here, here already and that they are just waiting for the time when they can show themselves and can sort of step forward and start to work, you know, in more of a collaborative way. So again, really, really beautiful, full of hope, really inspiring. But also, you know, the frequency of this star system is very much 5D, very much heart consciousness. So again, this is something that, you know, we can reach out and take and it is there, it's being projected onto us. It's just, are we ready to allow it in and to embrace it and to start to integrate that energy? Because, you know, through the opposition, it is about integrating at the end of the day. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope I've left you with lots to consider, lots to um, ponder and, you know, digest and integrate. And um, that's always my intention. If you're interested in seeing what galactic um, connections you have and what is activating your natal chart, or your transit chart at the moment, I do offer reading. So please check my website out, spiralbright.co.uk. Um, you can also join my newsletter if you want to receive a monthly update of what is coming up for the month ahead. Um, and yeah, other than that, I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you as always for being with me and um, being on this journey with me. Please like and share um, the content if you feel it's useful and valuable and, you know, and other people will benefit from um, hearing it and seeing it. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I'll be back soon.